the put up or shut up moment of 2021. It's December of 2020, and I wish I had more time, but I don't. So here we are, and I'm writing this several months ahead of schedule. Back in July, I made a rant called When a Plan Comes Together. In it, I talked about what the virus would take away from us, the details of the vaccination program, and what to expect in the months to come. I was hoping that nothing would be released until the first quarter of 2021, but as the saying goes, man makes plans, God laughs. And that is where this rant will begin and end with God. I've danced around this religious issue for over five years, and now it's time for me to lay it on the line. I was raised in a strong rural Christian community on an island in the very northwest corner of the United States. For me and the people around me, church wasn't just a Sunday thing. I attended regular service, Sunday school, youth groups, vacation Bible camps during the summer, even Camp Malibu in an isolated part of British Columbia. Younger generations find the King James Bible somewhat dry. The Ten Commandments are simple enough, but what really interested me were the last chapters, otherwise known as the Book of Revelation. It was the potential future a spider web of prophecies and a look into the final act, the final struggle, and eventual conclusion of good versus evil. That is what I thought anyway. Anyone that knows my work knows that I rarely delve into chapter and verse, mostly because I don't want to draw the ire of the unwashed heathen masses. You know who you are. In this video, I will read parts of two chapters from Revelation. Why am I doing this? Because year after year, decade after decade, I have heard religious men make the same assumption without any backup plan. That assumption being that the rapture will save a lot of Christians before anything really bad happens. It has always been the get out of jail free card for Christianity, and I have questioned it since I was a child. It seemed too easy, too convenient. For those of you who are new to these concepts, I will give you the quick nickel tour. According to the Christian Bible, there will be a horrible time in the future where loyal servants of God are under attack while the world crumbles around them, eventually ending with a complete world cataclysm. It's known as the Tribulation, and one might think that most people in the loop would be very concerned about this dark prophecy. However, the Tribulation doesn't raise much concern because it has been assumed for centuries that there would be a supernatural event called the Rapture, where all good Christians would be snatched up by God in the blink of an eye and eventually taken to heaven, leaving any new or fence-line Christians the challenging task of surviving the tribulation under massive duress from the system and peers, all the while desperately struggling to keep their faith. Oh, and the rest of humanity would be judged and burned forever in a lake of fire. All of this extreme drama hinges upon a very fragile timeline that assumes this rapture would occur before the dark times began. And to make matters worse, I don't think there has ever been a pastor to ever suggest the alternative, that the rapture was actually scheduled later in the timeline, if it existed at all. Currently, there is no backup plan for this outcome in the Christian faith. The reason why I'm making this video is because of a very specific event that happens during the tribulation, something called the Mark of the Beast, otherwise known as the dreaded 666. Unless you have been living in a cave since you were born, you've heard the term several times in your life. What you probably haven't heard is the original text from Revelation 13. Months ago, I stated that when I actually did this rant, I was going to read both chapters in their entirety, but after testing the text out on some people, I decided to only go into selected verses. For this rant, we will start with verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak 
and caused that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. There was something very specific in that text, and for me it carries almost as much weight as the Ten Commandments. It says that sometime in the future there will be a system, an identifying mark that everyone will be required to get, and without it, you will be economically crippled. Up until now, this seemed like a near logistical impossibility. No one would voluntarily submit to such a system, unless, of course, it was disguised as, say, a massive public health crisis. Biblical scholars have always said that we probably wouldn't see a beast system put in place during our lifetime. The VAX verification program currently being rolled out won't take years. It will take months. All healthcare has already stated they will require it to enter buildings. So of schools and international travel companies. That will quickly be followed by public event centers, big box stores, and then finally restaurants, retail, and grocery stores. The masks were just to see how quickly the ID system could be saturated. And as you have seen, everyone fell in line in less than a year. Now I will show you the other side of the coin. For some reason, the general public seemed only to be interested in chapter 13 of Revelation. It is chapter 14 that you should pay attention to, especially if you consider yourself a good Christian. To keep you from glazing over, we will start with verse 8 and stop at 13. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever received the mark of his name here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Or simply put, if you take the mark, the ID tag, the number, whatever you want to call it, then you just made God's list of the damned and will be shown no mercy at all. I suppose the only silver lining here is that if you get the mark, you don't have to worry about attending church anymore. I mean, really, what would be the point? Now, some of you might question this decision. It does come off as harsh, considering the seemingly small infraction. Getting branded by a world system ID tag doesn't appear to be a capital offense. Not so fast. The very first commandment says this, You shall have no other gods before me. Submitting your allegiance to the beast system is a premeditated violation against it. Period. Can a world ID system be classified as a god? You've heard the dramatic exchange before. Bend the knee and I will give you what you desire. Your old freedoms are what you most desire and they are being held captive by the system. 
This will be sold back to you at what appears to be a small price. Let's keep the rest of this somewhat brief so as not to be overwhelming. Most people will take the mark because of laziness, ignorance, or what they define as necessity. Because of these inherently human traits, many of your friends, family, and co-workers will take the mark. There will be immense peer pressure all around you to submit and bend the knee. Everyone is in a slightly different situation, so I can't speak for yours. Will I take the chance and go against an accurate prophecy now 2,000 years old? Hell no. Will it be difficult? Yes, there will be suffering as lines are drawn and decisions are made. For all those strong Christians I grew up with, the ones who led the youth groups or camps or gave tear-inspiring speeches about loyalty, dedication, and sincere faith, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Let's see how your conviction stands up as the world increases the heat and the pressure. It was so much easier when you thought you weren't going to be here for the dark times. Maybe it never occurred to you that you might have to prove yourself with more than just words. I'm not projecting guilt. You might have feelings of dread or anxiety. Don't be too hard on yourself. This is a test of faith that almost everyone, including me, thought they were going to get out of. It's time to look deep inside your heart and figure out what's really important, what you stand for, and what you believe. My last words on the matter are these. For those of you out there who realize you do have a valuable soul, don't underestimate these words and take this decision lightly. Do your own research, ask questions, and choose wisely.